Okay. Hi, everybody. This is Stacey Kimbrell, and I hope that you're doing well today. Um, I'm a Diamond Three Young Living, and I've been with Young Living for 14, a little over 14 years. And it's a pleasure to come here and teach you uh, what I know. Obviously, we can't speak totally freely uh, because of the governing rules, but hopefully you can read between the lines and understand um, how you can help yourself better. And I said this a minute ago, but if you happen to realize anything that I missed, please let me know. And that way I can make sure it's added in here. And this way that we can all use this information. It should be compliant, of course, but great education. And I have a couple of references for a couple of other great teachers as well, especially if someone's into the science of things and oils and chemistry. Um, well, I'll say his name right now is Doug. Um, oh, my gosh. Doug Corrigan. <laughs> I just forgot, but I have a reference for him. I hope that's him. And, um, and that way you can uh, get his material, listen on his page as well, uh, because he just has fabulous stuff and he just makes it really easy. Um, if you don't know already, I'm the author of Living Balanced and it is available on Amazon if you chose to, but it's Living Balanced by Stacey Kimbrell. And it's a book on healthy nutrition and chemical awareness it sort of goes over everything from like A to Z. It's compliant with Young Living. Um, I used to have oil things in there, but I took them out. Um, but it supports what we do. And because of that, I actually could say a lot more. So if you're helping someone with magnesium or vitamin D or progesterone, and it goes over what sugars are good, bad, just everything from A to Z. And each chapter is one page to uh, eight pages long. So it's very short, condensed, uh, precise information that will just get you on your way that's not overwhelming and should be nice and easy. So if you want, uh, that's the information for that. Uh, if you already have it, and uh, hopefully you liked it. Let's see here. Let's go to how to be an oiler. Here we are. Sure. Okay, perfect. So how to be an oiler, um, fascinating facts. And hopefully there's something you learn new today. This is exciting. One thing, this is for your entertainment only. So uh, I'm not providing you information to diagnose, treat, or cure disease. Uh, that is between you and your doctor. And these, uh, what I'm about to say has not been evaluated by the FD, uh, FTC, the FDA, or the CDC. So, um, you know, right now we're not able to speak completely freely. So I will share with you what I can of my experiences and we'll go from there. And I know most people probably understand and know this already, but what are essential oils? If you didn't know already, this is a frankincense tree. It's just like, uh, it doesn't look so beautiful, but it's beautiful when you think about what really happens. In order to get the oil, you have to slice the tree with a knife. You wait till the resin oozes out, they collect that, and then they distill it however they're going to use it. If you don't have a frankincense burner, that is like amazing and it smells so good. I just love that. I use that as much as possible. Um, and the frankincense oil, of course, and we have sacred frankincense, but essential oils are aromatic concentrated plant extracts that are carefully uh, obtained through steam diffusion uh, for almost everything or cold press for citrus oils. Um, they're created by tapping a tree like this one, for example, and MERS that way. I think Copaiba is that way. Um, and they're made from either the steam, the leaves, the flowers, the fruit, the bark, the resin, or there's other ways, I'm sure. Essential oils have optimal levels of specific natural occurring constituents, which is we're going to go over a little bit today to maximize the potential for wellness uh, properties. Essential oils date back, way back in the day, uh, 3500 BC. Uh, of course, the Egyptians, the uh, uh, Chinese, uh, Peruvians used essential oils. And of course, for those who know the story, they were brought to uh, Christ after his birth. Um, and this is something that generate, or, oh my gosh, people have used for centuries. Um, and just embalming purposes. I mean, there's a reason why, you know, Christ was given frankincense and myrrh. Um, and, you know, if you heard the teachings of this, um, I think it's interesting and fun because, um, you know, Christ wasn't really materialistic, obviously. Um, he went places for free. He, he worked uh, or people provided meals or shelter for him. 
So Gary Youngham mentioned once that balsam um, oil is the oil of gold. So we don't know because we weren't there and we'll find out one day perhaps, but he believed that balsam oil was really the oil of gold. So it wasn't really gold that they gave him. It was balsam, uh, frankincense, and myrrh. Balsam was also found in those regions and uh, in the the vats that Gary Young found when he was going through Egypt. So it wouldn't be out of character to have that oil there as well. So interesting, who knows? Why essential oils? And compliantly, they provide support to every system in the body. They are natural detox. They support brain health. We know just by breathing this in, we can feel happier um, or sleep better multiple different ways of applications. They bypass digestion, depending on how you're using them. They are adaptogenic, uh, which means they're gonna adapt to what you need in that moment. They carry nutrients to the cell. They're simple to use. Uh, I don't know if you've seen, but you have people with little children who are making their own oil capsules. I mean, to me, that's like amazing, exciting. I'm rubbing on their own bodies or uh, the little, I saw a little girl the other day who was rubbing it on her sister and the sister was like only a couple months old. I've applied oils at birth to um, infants, obviously. And it's just what a blessing to be able to anoint. I, if I had a uterus, I had it taken out before young living, I would go back and have children and try to do this all right because mine are 26 and 22. So I didn't know about any of these things back then. Um, it can help calm the mind, uh, replace harmful chemicals such as glad plugins and candles and all those kinds of things. Uh, they are high in antioxidants and they assist the immune system and of course have a huge effect on stress reduction. There's different grades of essential oil. Um, grade A is what we call it. We sort of don't use these grade names anymore, but depending on where you're looking, you may see them. So let's just go over them. Uh, grade A is the premium grade essential oils. Young Living happens to offer these. Uh, so this is a blessing. Uh, this is, goes far on AFNAR, which is the aromatherapy standards and organic practices. Uh, we have to realize that when Young Living is out of an oil, which has happened a number of times, even from our own farm, like Hillichrism, I don't know if it was like 10 years ago, um, we planted it, we grew it, we harvested it, we distilled it, and it wasn't the properties back then we used to call it therapeutic, or now we call it premium, it wasn't to Gary Young's standards. And so he refused to bottle it and he sold it to another uh, company who is okay with inferior oils. And so this is something that is like, I'm like, you know, Hillichrist is sort of pricing. I'm like, can we just take our chances and get it half off and we'll see if it does what it needs to do? Um, but no, so if we, are out of an oil, there's a reason why. And you have to understand that, of course, other essential oil companies are never out of oils. And any of us can source an oil from anywhere. So we never have a need to be lacking or out of um, stock of the essential oil. But if we're following a certain standard, which Young Living does, then yes, we may not have it because we can't control uh, Mother Earth here and whether you have enough water or the soil or whatever the situation may be. Grade B is food grade essential oils. Um, a lot of people have this labeling now. The FDA has approved. Remember, there's no real regulations on essential oils. It's underneath the cosmetic act, so they can either be done as a perfume or as a flavoring. Uh, grade C, grade D are definitely oils that we uh, would not be interested in using. And no matter what, you have to read the ingredient label, but people are allowed, it's like, uh, what's it, 38%, uh, I believe it is, that you don't have to put on a label. And so that's where like anything. So we know that there's chemical constitu constituents in some of these but they don't have to put it on the bottle. If there's 5% of the essential oil, the rest of it could be ethyl alcohol, propylene glycol, mineral oil, um, and they don't have to disclose it. So this is because it's still underneath the Cosmetic Act, Act. You know, this is not treated as a medicine. Although after researching this, they are using, and this is where um, Doug Corrigan, I don't know why I said it earlier, but I think it's Doug Corrigan, goes over great information in his skill set of his job. He's a biochemist and a couple of other titles. And he actually worked for the pharmaceutical company 
uh, and they're using essential oils as a delivery agent um, for medications to absorb quicker into the bloodstream. So it's really interesting when you start researching, if you go to PubMed and looking at some of the stuff, I, I just have so much fun studying uh, this kind of thing. Why Young Living? Um, I did a video not too long ago. I, I know it's on Grow and it's on the um, Diamond page, um, the 12 Days of Diamonds, if you ever want a chance to listen to that, because I am diehard with Young Living. Young Living is dedicated to the seed to seal process. They are dedicated to their members, to um, their staff, their products, what they put on the market. You know, back in the day when they realized, you know, back in the day, folic acid wasn't a problem. And when they found out folic acid is not the best choice and we should have it methylated, they changed it in Super B. So the company is still growing and learning just as all of us, all of us are. And if you just want to put that into a perspective, is like how many of you knew that chia seeds were just for chia pets? We didn't know they were for food, you know, five, 10 years ago, right? So we're like, oh my gosh, now chia, we're eating this. It's like, well, that's what we put on these little heads and grew little, you know, animals or whatever, right? And this is food that people have been eating for centuries. It's just us in the US didn't know about it. And so you know, as Young Living learns, they grow as well, which is wonderful. Um, I love that they're not too proud to let the people know um, when they make a mistake and what they need to do to correct it. And they're about moving forward. I personally love that all Young Living seeds are non-GMO. As I said, I was just in Ecuador and you see all the seedlings and all the, the greenhouse of all these plants with the new seeds to do the new plants. It's just like, oh my gosh, it's just so amazing. Young Living is in control of the whole process from start to finish for cultivating, for harvesting, distilling the plants. And because of Gary Young, in, they know what time of year, what time of month, day specifically. Like when I was there, they were doing Okatea. And Okatea, I just did a video, it's on my personal um, page, uh, Stacy Ashby Kimbrell about Okatea and how many days they have to have it there and flip it for. And uh, they, there's workers out there literally flipping these branches and leaves of Okatea over and over um, through like the three to four day process until the bricks are ready to start the distilling process. I mean, it's just like, I'm sitting here watching this. He's like, you hear these things, but when you get to really see um, and I love in the distillery, the mission statement is there for the workers, not only for the, what the workers should be like and the mental um, attitude that they should have and what Young Living upholds, but why we're doing this and for the customers uh, as ourselves. So it's really exciting process. Uh, continuing, Young Living is a one family owned company since 1994. That's really important and it will stay that way. Young Living is a world leader in premium essential oils. Young Living um, essential oils are pioneering for the last 26 years. Uh, and I know this personally with stability, integrity, uh, purpose, and passion. And it's just exciting to see the same passion coming up with uh, Gary Mary's children and Mary still. Okay, excuse me. Um, Young Living exceeded over 2.2 billions in sales in, 220, in two, um, 2020. The purpose for telling you this is that this company is not going anywhere. It's still continuing to grow. Um, and so there's great stability there. We have 10 corporate farms and 15 partnering farms. The, farm, the partnering farms adhere to the same regulations as our farms and they are monitored every step of the way. Remember, each oil is tested up to 45 times. And so um, that's a lot. I'm, I mean, most people do not do that. Um, Young Living has amazing support staff and corporate uh, headquarters. And, you know, generally speaking, um, I've had fabulous experiences with 99% of all Young Living staff. So, I mean, it's just, we may have a couple of things with customer service sometimes that, you know, has been different lately for us. But things are growing and changing and improving. And when you have such high um, volume increases, you know, that you have to hire people to answer the phone. So they may not all be to the, the standard of which we're used to, but we have bodies that are willing to learn.
excuse me, the Gary Y Young Living, the Gary uh, D Young Foundation. This is like amazing. And uh, they just tore down this building, building why I was there in Ecuador just in November. And that's the old school that Gary drove by. I don't know how many times then went in there to try to see what it was and realized it was a school. And that's when he started the whole process of creating the academy. 98 graduates. Um, it's just amazing. So I love the foundation. Young Living pays for all administration costs. In 2020, there was over 8 million received in donations. Uh, and since 2017, over 900,000 people's lives changed. We're talking about like majorly changed. Not, not only did some of these foundations teach about Jesus, if that's important to you, but they give them shelter, education, new skill sets. And I love that Young Living is actually like uh, the ornaments or the, the bracelets. You know, the people are in these uh, foundations, uh, sectors with a soul hope or whatever the different ones are, and they're learning new skill sets and Young Living is providing that service for them. But now we're actually paying them to make the, uh, the products that we're giving away as our free promotions. So that is amazing. Our seed to seal quality commitment, we have the seed, the cultivate, the distill, the test, and the seal once again. And we have total control over this. And so this is exciting once again to make sure that people really understand why Young Living and what sense sets Young Living apart from others. And there's no one who lives up to our standards of testing. There's, just ask if you, someone asks about a different essential oil company, call them and say, how, what kind of testing do you do? How many times is each single oil peppermint, for example, tested before you bottle it and sell it? Um, so, okay. The next thing is there's something for everybody. So your husband's like, why oils or your father, your mother, whoever? It's like, well, there's something for aging. There's something for babies, animals, everyone in between. We have 90 single oils, 89 blends, and 47 vitality or plus oils, depending if I don't, saw some people are coming from Canada. Um, so they have the plus line. We have the vitality line. Both of them are for dietary supplement. Um, and we have a fabulous CBD product, CBD product with no THC. So that is amazing. Um, and there's something here for all of us. Makeup, I love when the makeup came in because I haven't worn makeup for like 13 years. And I just started wearing the lipstick and the mascara. I don't even remember how to put the other stuff on anymore. But, you know, I'm glad that I have a lipstick option now uh, because that's something I always did enjoy uh, back in the day. So safety, I just love this little picture. I don't know whose children these are because I found them online, but how precious do they look? Just teaching uh, young, my kids were eight and 12 when we learned about uh, health and nutrition and chemical awareness and essential oils. And so they've been using them uh, ever since. And my eldest son, he's like, I need helichrysum. I'm just like, dude, what do you do with this oil? That's like one of the most expensive ones. And he has his own account. He buys helichrysum on a regular basis. But um, safety, if you're using the oils correctly, um, with the guidelines that are given and applying common sense, there should not be a problem ever. Uh, so that's exciting. Uh, I know that my girlfriend's baby uh, was very constipated. She didn't expect to have a problem during delivery. She had to take Tylenol with codeine. It made the uh, baby uh, constipated. So right then uh, she's like, what are we gonna do? The baby hasn't pooped in three days. And uh, this is before we had tummy jives. Unmute. Okay. Oops. Let's go back here now. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Thumbs up, somebody. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, what was I saying? Essential oils are safe. Yes. When okay. So the baby. Um, so we used uh, coconut oil and some digize. Uh, we used like two drops of digize, and it was like probably like 
you know, a nickel size in your hand of coconut oil. And then we were able to rub the baby's feet, of course, for like reflexology and the abdomen and a clockwise motion. And the baby literally pooped in 20 minutes. So mom was very happy. Uh, baby was happy. And, you know, there's new rules and guidelines and different things that are always coming out. This is what we did at that time, which is probably like, oh, she just had her 16th birthday. So 16, no, I guess she couldn't have because she's, um, it must have been she, she just turned 14. How long have I been doing oils? Maybe I'm doing it longer. I don't remember now. But anyhow, I know she just had her birthday. And so uh, it's amazing what we can do at whatever ages we need to. So this is really important. So safety, you can never put an essential oil inside your ear and drip it in there. Please don't ever do that. If you had your finger and you had some on there, you may perhaps could go like this or put some on a cotton ball, make sure it's not um, liquidy. You can't squeeze any out, you know, and place it in the air. I've done that a number of times for myself and my children. You can rub it in front and behind and down like that, but you never inside the ears. That's like an absolute no. I'm sure many of us here have got oils inside of our eyes. And if anyone's eyes falling out, please let me know so I can let everyone know, but it's never happened to me. I've got two drops of peppermint in my eye. I was trying to close something. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, all that kind of stuff. If you have a carrier oil, if you had a little bit of uh, olive oil or V-set, you just put it here and just swipe your eye. Don't use the same finger that you just got it in with, right? Or if you had oils on your hand, um, but otherwise, you know, if you didn't have anything, then one time that happened to me, I was driving, so I had to stop. And then I just let my eye tear up for like five minutes and it was fine. If you have contacts, of course, take it out. Uh, but otherwise, you know, that's bound to happen at some point in life. Citrus oils are photosensitive. So when I was a kid, I used to put lemon oil, excuse me, lemon is uh, fruit in my hair, squeeze it to get it lightened. So if you can imagine that concept, the, the citrus oils do the same thing, including bergamot and lemongrass is not a citrus oil. Um, so those are ones that you don't use in the sun. So I'm not going to be wearing a bikini anytime soon. So if I was at the beach, I could rub it all over here and do this, but I wouldn't be putting on my face and my arms or where the sun's going to be exposed. Hot oils are considered like peppermint, clove, lemongrass, cinnamon bark. So uh, when you're using especially those kind of oils, you may want to use a carrier oil. Um, I love lemongrass on my knees and peppermint. I don't use a carrier oil for that, but if you... If you need to, we want to, then of course you do, or someone's younger or has sensitive skin. My friend Marcy has, her skin is as white as this piece of paper. And if the sun came in through this window wrapped around right now and got her, she'd get burnt. So she uses a carrier oil on everything. Um, let's see here. And of course a carrier oil can help with movement of oils. If you put an oil right here, sometimes it's gonna absorb very quickly and you don't have the, uh, you know, the, uh, ability to rub it around. Let's see, we went over the eyes. Babies, we dilute one drop to one uh, teaspoon of carrier oil. If you wanna do something different, dilute it more, then please go ahead. I'm really, I love roller bottles, but I, I really don't like a lot of the roller bottle recipes that says to add, you know, fill this whole thing up with coconut oil and then for your eyelash serum, add three drops of essential oil. It's like, are you literally kidding me? Like, what is that supposed to do? And so I like to make sure my roller bottles are the majority of what I'm interested in and whatever, unless you're looking for a scent for like a cologne, like you can literally put like 10 drops of Shutran with a 10 mil coconut and it still smells like Shutran and it makes for a good cologne. Like that's different. But, you know, if you're trying to work on something, then, you know, I wouldn't just put three drops of pan away in 10 mil bottle of coconut oil because we can just use it just as is. And pets, uh, we have two dogs and one of them is Chewy. He was a rescue dog. He loves the oils. I almost don't like to wear shorts around because he'll just lick them off my legs. It drives me bananas. My other dog runs. Although when Russell, is there's thunder or lightning or fireworks or machine guns on the TV, he always comes to me looking for something. And we've used them on the both dogs. And Russell, we've, he's 13 years old since he was a baby. So I think he doesn't like oils because he got into a bottle. He ate through like a cap of wintergreen and lemongrass when he was a puppy. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that's why he did like it so much. 
the vitality labels, those colors, those different ones, knowing that it's the same oil inside each bottle, but there's different labeling because of the FDA wanted to label them separately so people could be clear, people would know and it'd be clearly defined. <clears throat> so the if, and Young Living has a lot of great new information. I'm not sure if you guys know who Pam Hunter is, but Pamela Hunter, but she has been going through this website um, and uh, helping other people that be to make sure that we have verbiage on here. And so uh, she announced it at the Silvers uh, retreat, uh, if you guys were there. And <clears throat> there's so much information you can say now. So this is why I'm telling you this. So if you're looking what you can say for cardio jays or peppermint or this or that or whatever, lemon or lemongrass, please go there and look at the vitality versus the not and see what you're allowed to say compliantly. So when you're teaching or posting, then you can use that or paste copy that page and post it on Facebook, whatever you want to do. So the labels do mean something different. If you're teaching and you're going to show that you're going to drink, uh, I'm, I'm going to put some oil in my water, then you need to use a white label. Uh, this is the vitality of the plus, and you need, you need to use that when you're filming or taking pictures. And this is for dietary um, consumption. The other bottles that have a color uh, that means that these are for a topical and aromatic. So you can put them in the diffuser, you can use them topically, and you can use them the other ways that we're going to be discussing. I hope my husband has a phone. Put this away somewhere. Hold on. Call from the wireless call. Sorry about that. I forgot to the phones out before I start teaching. Okay. This is exciting. How your cell membranes work. So there is this is, you can find this on Dr. Google. There's about a hundred trillion cells that make up the human body just in general. One drop of essential oil contains 40 million trillion molecules itself, one drop. And one drop of essential oil can cover every cell in our body with 40,000 40, molecules. And so that's sort of a mouthful, but when you start looking at the science of this stuff, I know we're not to, we're not allowed to speak freely and say a lot of things, but when you start really learning about some of the science behind this and other things and going to governmental websites, you will be able to use and apply common sense that if it works with this, surely it can work with other things. The cell membrane separates the material from the outside and the inside of the cell, which obviously makes sense. And it controls the passage of materials in and out of the cell. The cell membrane is a double layer of, uh, gosh, how do you say this again? Phyto -sul sulfic lipid molecules. I just said that wrong, but we'll look at that up. Uh, proteins in the cell membranes provide structure, support, and form channels for passage of materials and act as receptor sites, functioning the carrier, mo uh, carrier molecules and provide identification markers. Now, what's exciting is essential oils can go wherever. They don't need a channel like a protein channel or a calcium channel to deliver, their, deliver them somewhere. Um, and so with about 1 million different proteins in a cell, essential oil molecules are lipophilic. So lipo is fat, right? And same as a photo, uh, gosh, I can't remember how to say this word. Uh, whatever the word is up here. And, oh, I can't even highlight it. Sorry, I was trying to highlight it for you. Um, so they can permeate and dissolve right into the lipid membranes in the cell so they can go anywhere they want to go. Essential oils are small, 50 times smaller than a cell. They come in different shapes and sizes and are lipophilic and love lipids and fats. The oils love the fats. And so a fat is a lipid, okay? Essential oils have 20 to 30, 300 different constituents. When you see the markers for like frankincense and it has a little hexagon shape with this little Y and that little Y or whatever, they have 20 to 300 different constituents in each essential oil. That's important to be aware because the difference between natural medicine, what we're talking about, is there's hundreds of compounds and they interact all together with like synergy, right? <clears throat> but when you separate it in the Western medicine, if they're taking out something, they're only gonna take out, it's only gonna have one 
compound because it doesn't have the intelligence of what God spoke into existence on the third day to have all of these compounds. It only has one because they're making it man-made. So this is why things work different for natural components versus uh, a man-made one. Um, essential oils have full range access to all cells. Free range should go wherever they want. And so I got a little ahead of myself. So right here, here's a little constituents that we're talking about. Eugene, uh, eugenol, excuse me, right here. That is the main component in clove that is has the numbing capabilities that dentists used for years for numbing, okay? But clove has more than this, but has all these different constituents or compounds that are in this one property. And if you just suck on this right here by itself, you may get cut a little with these little pokey things, but not only does it have a fabulous favor, but it will numb up. If you're on some planet and they only have this in your tooth hurts, put that in your mouth and it will numb it right up or put some hot water in just a little bit, hold that, you know, drink it later on, it will numb it up. So clove is amazing. We're allowed to say it contains antioxidants, uh, provides immune support and wellness support. So we're allowed to say that on Young Living's website. Obviously, if you want to go research clove, you can see uh, what it does. But clove is actually one of the highest antioxidants on the market as a food source. Not, not even talking about essential oil as a food source. Okay, the circulatory system, I want to go skip down to the bottom. We're allowed to say that lemongrass, lemon, grapefruit, and basil help to support the circulatory system, which is what? It's your whole cardiovascular blood supply. Oxygen coming in, using, going out, keeps circulating to your fingers, to your toes, to your head, to your brain, your eyeballs, everywhere, right? So this is like really exciting that whether you use the oils topical uh, or ingest them through drinking or a capsule or aromatically, um, it's going to enter the circulatory system. And crazy enough, circulatory system is uh, the fastest way into it is aromatically. Like who would even think? I just love this stuff. And once again, the oils love the fat molecules. And so they're going to be going right in to the whole bloodstream. Remember the, the whole reason for eating and drinking is what? To gain nutrients to help re reproduce healthy cells. You eat it, it goes to the digest, it goes to the liver, it goes to the digestive system, and then it gets uptake through the little villi right into the bloodstream. So it's like, you can see what they can do right here. And if lemongrass and lemon and grapefruit and basil can support the circulatory system, I wonder what else could, right? You know, I didn't finish this slide. So, but this is talking about, uh, how they were measuring brain waves um, with oils. I'm going to get this developed. I talked to Dr. Um, Ali about it. And so I'm going to get some information so I can help support his information. And if you want to go research something by uh, Dr. Terry uh, Friedman, and he used uh, EEGs and to measure brain waves when just smelling essential oils. It's quite fascinating. How quickly do oils work? Um, I wanted to do a little bit more research into this slide. Although this is what mostly everyone teaches. Um, so I'm going to go with it right this second. If it needs to be corrected, I'll do that later. But 22 seconds, you should be able to reach the, within 22 seconds, obviously, should be able to reach the brain. I remember I was teaching somewhere once and a lady came in and she seemed very distraught. I know she was coming from a funeral. I did not know the lady at all. Sort of like a small little gathering. And so I said, hey, hon, before you even try to sit down to process and you know, gather what we're doing. Let's all just take a break for a second. And I just asked her, I said, smell, uh, stress away, peace and calming. Which one do you like better? She liked the stress away. So I asked her, just put some on her hands, you know, go like this, rub it over her chest, breathe it in. And I said, if you want to rub it on your face, your hair, or what are your arms? And I just said, I just want you to breathe in 10 times the nose and the mouth. And I mean, it was like a commercial and she was just like, you know, all tense and like upset about the situation and whatever. And you just could see her shoulders going down, like her whole demeanor was changed. She's like, she's like, I really feel good. I'm just like, well, amen. I'm like, this is amazing. You know, I mean, and she thought it was amazing because that was her first introduction. Just how quickly something could change. Two minutes, they say, into the bloodstream and 20 minutes into uh, the cells in the body. 
Okay, this little image, if you ever want this, is on Young Living's blog. But tonight we're gonna to be going over essential oil application. We're gonna to go over topically on our skin, aromatically, into the lungs, the nose, and the mouth, and then internally by ingesting vaginal and rectal. Um, emotional support is what people generally speaking think is what essential oils are for. And they are much more than that, but uh, loosely people just think aromatherapy and you're stressed, you need sleep or, you know, depressed or something like that. And while they have those benefits and they can help with those things, um, just breathing in an oil, like I just mentioned with a young lady at the funeral, just can help the body adapt to stress. I use peace and calming all the time. I believe in being proactive because being proactive can not have you have a situation. So when my son was younger, um, you know, every day this child was like not turning in his homework and he come home and then, you know, like you're paying for private school and he's like failing, which is like driving me obviously, you know, where. And so get really upset. And then my husband had complained about chest pain before, but I've never had chest pain. So I didn't know even what to expect with that. So anyhow, one day I got very upset. And so, um, I got physical chest pain where like, I couldn't even like take another breath. It was like, you couldn't even take a breath. Cause it was like tightening up and it was just the crazy is like it really shallow. And I was like, Oh my God, it's like Fred Sanford, Elizabeth. I thought, thought I was going to die. And so, uh, my husband got me the peace and calming because that's my favorite oil. I literally just rubbed it all over my chest and I breathed it in first, you know, I don't know, maybe a minute. And it literally, I could just take a deep breath and it stopped that situation, which was like just a crazy experience for my, myself. So what we decided to do is before this child comes home and gets off the bus at three o'clock, we would rub peace and calming on each other's chest and sit there and wait. And perhaps it's going to be a good day and perhaps it wasn't. Uh, but if it wasn't, uh, because he didn't turn his homework again, we, I never got chest pain again. So, you know, using it proactive, I don't leave my bedroom until I put my oils on because you never know what's going to happen when you walk outside the door. I'll have two pieces of carpet at my house. My dogs only like to poop and pee and vomit on those two pieces. Okay. So it's like, and it's right when you walk out and if you're not looking down, you'd step in something. Right. So it just really helps me uh, personally. Uh, helps with temporary sadness, occasional anxiety, uh, being created, uplift. Wintergreen is not known as um, anti-anxiety or a mood booster or bring you joy, but I literally love the smell of wintergreen. So I just use this for the heck of it, and I don't care what I smell like. So it's like, oh, you smell like Bengay. I'm like, and I love the smell of apparently Bengay then if it smells like that. And I just use wintergreen all the time because I love the smell that makes me feel happy. It makes me feel good. I actually just ran on my deep relief and I understand that this is for deep relief somewhere, <clears throat> but I love the smell of this and I love the way it makes me feel. So a lot of times when I'm working, I'll just rub it on the back of my neck or if I'm driving and it just like the smell is exciting. It just gives me energy. I just love it. So for example, that's our different emotional support ways that we can use the oils, but everything absorbs into our skin that we put on our skin. So I want you to think about a pain patch or birth control patch or a smoker's patch, whatever you put on your skin will absorb into your bloodstream, good or bad. So you want to make sure that what you're using is good and how the oils absorb into the skin, into your bloodstream, uh, is going to make a huge difference on what you're using, how much, where, and all that. So our feet have the thickest skin. And of course, behind the ears, your armpits, back, you know, other places have uh, less thick skin. So it's going to absorb faster through the thinner skin areas. This is from Doug Corgan, Dr. Doug Corgan. His website is Starfish Sense, S-C-E-N-T-S. You can find him on Facebook. Um, he teaches, um, and this is this is a slide. I got permission for uh, his application method. And he uh, found some studies where it talks about how the best place to absorb the oils is through the scrotum. I don't have one, so I use, use someplace else. But of course, you don't want to put peppermint there. <clears throat> and whenever I need to find out if an oil can work on the testicles, I always ask my husband, 
he said, why can't you try? And I was like, I don't have a testicles. And so, you know, you find out that some oils you probably shouldn't put there like lemongrass. And so <clears throat> anyhow, I've got some great stories on that and other people who have experimented the wrong way. But nevertheless, this is the absorption fastest to slowest for what was tested is one through 12, the scrotum, the armpits, the scalp, the forehead, the ear, the jaw, the inner elbow, uh, abdomen, the back of the hand, the bottom of the foot, <clears throat> uh, the palm of the hand and the forearm. Now, because the foot is the thickest location of skin, uh, it's not gonna be the fastest absorbing, but it's the less um, evasive, it'll stay, the slower application will stay longer in your body and you can't get a reaction from it. You know, I, I mean, I haven't heard of anyone ever getting a reaction in 14 years on the bottom of their feet from an oil. So <clears throat> my grandma one time put, I don't know, someone gave her some um, bed and bath lotion and then she mixed her oils with it and she got a rash because you cannot mix oils with petroleum, which I think I forgot to say for safety but you cannot mix oils with petroleum. So the other places to apply oils is underneath the tongue, your pulse points, like your carotid artery, your wrist, the inner part of the elbow, uh, back behind like your knees, <clears throat> the inside of the ankles, top of the head, the back of the neck, along the spine, over the heart, shoulders, legs, you can put them anywhere. Um, and so uh, not that you wanna do this, but I've had a catheter with essential oils in my bladder. Um, and so you really can use oils in many different ways. So uh, topical beauty will go over right this second. I'm realizing what time it is. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Applying neat, which means undiluted. You can apply dilution. I love mixing like frankincense and like sandalwood because sandalwood already feels like the olive oil kind of texture. And so you don't need a carrier oil. I love the Mira shave oil. I don't even use it for shaving. I use it for my face. I just love that stuff or sandalwood moisturizing cream, which I know we don't have the second, but it's coming back if you didn't know that already. Um, you can use it as nail polish remover. It gets gum out of the hair. You could eat through rubber bands. If you had a little girl and you put rubber bands in her hair and you just put it on there and just eat through it, make your own DIY or DIY shampoo and soaps and linen sprays and perfumes and colognes and sugar scrubs. I mean, those things are so much fun to do. And of course, your own chemical-free personal care products. So your face serums, your moisturizer, you know, if you, if you have a shampoo, of course, Young Living or like old fashioned Castile soap, <clears throat> uh, maybe there's others, but I don't know about them. Then you can put oils in there uh, as well for whether it's scent or you're working on a situation. Uh, other ways to use oils is a nasal rinse. Um, I don't have a video on this. I had one, but I had to take it down because it wasn't compliant. But I'm thinking about doing another one because I have a whole thing on this. Uh, my gosh, it works so well. If you don't have a nasal sprayer, you can put it in your hand and snort it. And you got to hold onto a counter for a little bit because your head's going to be like, whoa. And then stuff just comes out. I really not into a neti pot because a neti pot cleans out right here and it goes over the bridge. Um, but you need the little cilia up here cleaned out. And that's where all the little hairs are, like dog matted hair, that this whole sinus cavity needs to be cleaned out. And you can do that exceptionally well. Of course, massaging those areas. Breathing in is a great one. Um, supports the body's natural response for in injury and irritation. Temporary physical discomfort. Um, helping kids who may wake up in the middle of the night. Of course, you can use it for oral health. I got butt bumps on there. Anyone know what that means? It usually starts with an H. Oils work exceptionally well for that, which we'll go over in a second. Uh, gargling, if you're going to use a, if you're going to use a, uh, a, a, if you're going to gargle and spit it out, then you need to use the oil per the FDA with a color label, okay? Because the oral cavity is not inside your body, they say. Doesn't make any sense, but let's keep going. Um, around the house, of course, we've seen uh, probably that you can put it on your toilet paper roll. Uh, it helps to get residue off of um, glass bottles, uh, like Louis stuff, your laundry soap, dish soap, you know, stain removers, jewelry cleaners. I mean, the, the sky's the limit. And like, I know there's a hundred more ways of these things. If you've got some good ones, let me know. Taking permanent marker off the wall works great. Um, you can use it to clean your stainless steel appliances and doorknobs, telephones, 
uh, all that before our guest just came, you know, uh, my son's 22, but it still works great. You use like old socks and you just put the oils or these or, you know, lemon soap, you know, whatever you want to use and go start washing stuff, right? Um, <clears throat> I wanted to add this in here because using thieves oil, I use on a regular basis for a myriad of reasons, but this person put, which you can do your own thing here and we can publicize this because it was an experiment that was done. So this is why you want to do your own experiments and you, you have the right to use them <clears throat> um, per the powers that be, right? So, you know, obviously this bread is pretty moldy and there is no mold where the thieves oil was applied. Like, I love that. Um, how to apply. If you don't know about these different ones, you can look it up, but there's uh, auricular therapy, which is your ear therapy. Um, there's reflexology, which is the feet. Vitaflex points. This is important to learn. You can do Vitaflex anywhere. Uh, there's a great Vitaflex roller um, that you can use if someone couldn't, they could put the oils on their feet, but they couldn't do it by themselves and they're by themselves or something raindrop technique, neuroricular technique, lymphatic extract technique. That is amazing. If you haven't had that done, look up extract. Um, lymphatic extract or young living and it should pop up some, by people who do it. If you're here in Michigan, I got a great person. Uh, aroma dome, that's when you put the tent before we even had aroma dome. And my son's Scooby-Doo tent, we used to always sit in there and I'd tell, read or do a story or something and have the diffuser inside there while we're sitting in there. Um, Another ways to apply is the DIY chest rub, right? You can make your own. And now Young Living has one that's fabulous. But if you wanted to make your own or you don't have it, you could do that. Uh, the throat drops or you could buy cough drops. It's so much fun to make these uh, things yourself. Sometimes they're like, okay, I'm going to do it once to say I did it. And then you just buy it because it's easier. But however you want to do it, roller bottles, spray bottles, bath, perfume, uh, the colognes. It's just so much fun to make those. Uh, pregnancy, you can use the oils in all different ways. And, um, you know, I know that it says not to use basil during uh, pregnancy, uh, but I have many women that I know that are from different countries that basically eat pesto raw and use so much basil, it's outrageous. And they're like, why would that be? And I was like, well, you know, for yourself, you need to pray about it and see what you feel is right for you. Because with some of the guidelines and rulings of how they tested things doesn't really make any sense. So if they're testing um, to see that you should be using clary sage during pregnancy, but they put a drop on a mouse that was cut open on a uterus and it contracted, and that's the reason why they're saying that, that's probably not a good example. So it's up to you. You know, you need to do your own research and see what you feel comfortable with. Um, the limbic system of the brain, I love how you can see when you breathe this in, these little molecules that go all throughout the brain, the nose, the esophagus, down into the lungs. There are studies that have shown that just by breathing in uh, an oil can shift your emotions uh, in less than a second, which I believe that to be 100% true. Um, that's a wrong slide. Uh, aromatic, when we use the oils, you drop it on your pillow uh, and the cotton ball to help keep spiders, the dryer balls. You know, I just use a diffuser without water in my attic. You know, the same kind of reasons that we use, uh, love using thieves for. Um, and we have two kinds of diffusers. This is uh, one of them that's a atomizing or nebulizing diffuser. There's literally no water in here. It's just hooked straight into the essential oil bottle. And so that's what you're getting when you breathe this in, probably not gonna be able to see with this lighting, but as you can hear it, hopefully you can see it, but it's a straight mist. So we have this going all the time and it can be on a timer and all of that. Um, see, there's more I wanna say and I'm getting a little uh, back, um, a little, I wanna do this presentation again. So, and be faster and more concise what we wanna teach and share because there's so much to go over and I know I'm not gonna have enough time because Barney's gonna be here in a few minutes if he's not here already. Um, internally using as a dietary supplement, this can help out in many different ways. 
oils and water don't mix. So back to that picture with the little drops, like when I gargle my drink or my, my, um, I make my own mouthwash and you can gargle and swallow it. So I have a little bit of peppermint here, a little bit of copa ivy here, a little orange here, you know, whatever oils that are in this mix are sticking to these surfaces all the way down. And so for me and my visual of how I think about it is when I'm breathing in anything, um, you know, my little peppermint's gonna go like whoop, and my little orange is gonna go whoop, and help to hopefully take care of what I need to take care of. Can't really see this very well, but these are my capsules I had the day I got to take it on a white background, but I mean, I almost didn't wanna take them, they were so pretty. But ingesting oils is something we do on a regular basis. You could use a vegetarian capsule, you can put it in your tea and foods. Uh, I know most of you guys all know this, um, I love peppermint. So like in my shakes every morning, I put about five drops of peppermint in there. Um, in my other shake, my vanilla, if that was peppermint, I do that for chocolate. And then if it's vanilla, I usually do like orange or tangerine. I put like 10 drops in. I generally speaking, take about 20 to 30 drops of citrus oil a day on a regular basis. And so if you don't know how or why you think that's absurd, I want you to go research the limonene and that's, I believe, underneath lemon on the Young Living's website, although orange has the highest amount of D-limonene. And once you research that, you'll know why I take it. And I love the taste of it. So it doesn't, you know, I sprayed on my wolf berries. I put uh, some hot water of my wolf berries, let it sit. And I put my ninja red in there and I put at least 10 drops of orange or tangerine in there. And I drink on that and then eat the wolf berries throughout the day if I'm at home. I mean, just beautiful things. Uh, what time is it? 56. Okay, internally suppositories, this is important. And I just put the links in the chat when I first started because it is amazing that this is, believe me, I, and I, I put a link to my video as well. This is like a really old video about how to make suppositories. This is before this beautiful mold. And so you can make them with straws or wooden spoons and this and that, whatever. Um, and I probably need to update that just to make things a little bit easier and more concise, but suppositories, I mean, I don't know anyone who really wants stuff on their butt, but this is like one of the best ways to get oils in your body. And really for lung application, this is the best way. So if you're trying to support your lungs, uh, you need to do this. And it's just happened recently with a lot of different people with different issues, which I'm sure you can use your imagination for. And, uh, you know, I get people who refuse to use them males and females. And once they start using them for whatever the situation may be, they literally are like, uh, I said, when you start to do this, you like, I said, like, I'll do anything. I'm like, go shot up from the little mountaintop here. That suppositories are the way to go. And of course, then they usually don't want to, but this is something that you can make and use. I use, this is yellow is nice visual. You don't have to use beeswax. You can use coconut oil and you just got to put it in the freezer and the, you guys have the link to the video, so we'll just keep going so I can try to finish most of this. But you can use these vaginal and rectal. I will tell you the best time to use it is at night when you go to bed or if you're going to take a nap during the day. Because as you can imagine, as you stand and liquid coconut oils in your cavity, it's going to start to drip out at some point, right? So the longer it can stay in there, better. Now, back in the day when we used to do rectal or vaginal suppositories, and what Gary Young taught us, which I don't have it downstairs actually, but you had a syringe with a catheter that was like that long. They hit insert rectally to get as high up in the rectum as you can, because remember there's six feet in the large intestine and that thing's only like two feet, right? Or at least it seems like it is. And so you got the oils up around the curve and they got to um, stay in there longer and it got to absorb longer because remember oils and, uh, you know, they sort of separate and they go to the outside walls if they have an opportunity, right? And so they just start absorbing through your body. You can use oregano and peppermint in this and it will not burn your butt, okay? So don't worry about that because you have a carrier oil, I promise you, or anything else. Of course, this bread just makes me hungry, but you can make your own salad dressings on the go or add them to olive oil like balsamic vinegar, um, you know, peppermint brownies, uh, Amanda, who's usually on this call, she puts like three drops of peppermint in a whole batch of peppermint. And I think she underdoes it. And then I usually 
put like one drop on each brownie. So, you know, you could do it however you want to do it. That's what we usually fight over. And okay, steam diffusion. This is something else I asked at the beginning. I don't think I saw anyone that knew about this. I'm definitely going to have to do a little bit more on this in detail, but not, not today because I only got one minute left. But steam diffusion is something um, that is really important that, uh, and before we go to Barney, I will go find this link real quick and put it in here that you guys can have access to it now, but it's not shareable. I, I couldn't find the shareable one that says more compliantly, okay? Um, I hope I said that okay. But anyhow, this is something literally when you use a diffuser without water, and you use a steam pot, I put a, a link in there for a kettle pot that you can use that's stainless steel because you don't want to use plastic and heat up and breathe in BPAs, right? So you have the steam of the water and the steam of this diffuser, or excuse me, the mist of this diffuser at the same place. You need to get an umbrella that comes down. If you're sitting at a table or if you're over a stove, get a, um, a towel and you put it over your head. And it is literally amazing what this does um, and how it goes into your body and goes to places you could never even imagine. And we use either coral calcium or baking soda or sulfurzyme in the water. And the water's gonna be steaming, not boiling. And so I'm not doing this topic any justice right now, except for probably teasing you if you don't know about it. But this is something that is a, I can't say a therapy, it's a technique that we used to teach every single person when they came in. And we have, at least I haven't taught it for many years. And we started using it again. And people were like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I'm like, I know, why did we stop teaching this? But I do know why, but need to get back to it. Um, okay, so let me just stop right here. Stop screen sharing. And let's see, is Barney on? Let me get him going. Barney's on. Let me, hi, Barney. Let me get you just set up as a co-host so you can get your stuff ready. Make co-host. Yeah, if, you know, if you need to go for a couple more minutes to take some questions, you can go ahead. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Barney's gonna give us a little bit more time here. And so if anyone has any questions, you can unmute yourself. And can you help out with that? Um, Uh-oh, did my, my helper went away. Okay, you can unmute yourself if you need to. Can you guys do that? And let me go find this link real quick. Or let's see here, Dropbox. Dropbox. Oh, no questions? Let's see. Okay, Steam STA. Yes, we can get the, you, anyone can have this PowerPoint. I just need to, um, I did not have a chance to get everything in there I wanted to get in there. So that's just my, what I want to do. And once again, if you, okay, sure. I'm sorry. I used to be great at multitasking. Copy link. Copy, okay. So if you have someone who could benefit from this Dropbox link, then please um, use it, share it. 